Boris Johnson today had one singular inspirational message. Britain, in hosting COP26, will bring the world together in the drive to get to net zero emissions. We're going to do it by 2050. We're setting the, the pace. I hope everybody will come with us. But this was a crowd distracted. Just a few hours earlier, an extraordinary intervention from the former and recently sacked president of COP26, Claire O'Neill. We've seen a, a, a huge lack of leadership and engagement. We're playing at kind of Oxford United levels where we need to be Liverpool if we are going to actually do what the world needs us to do. So which is it then? Is the UK at the forefront of tackling climate change? Or is it in fact mid-table languishing in the lower leagues? COP26 represents a massive chance for the UK to re-sculpt its reputation post-Brexit. Critics say, though, it's simply not taking that opportunity. COP26 is a big deal, a last chance perhaps for world leaders to come together to find a solution to an existential threat to the planet. De Paris pour le est accepté. COP21 in Paris was seen as a success binding countries to limit heating to no more than two degrees Celsius, known as the Paris Agreement. But moments like this came off the back of years of diplomacy. To repeat what the French did, you know, five years ago, they did two years of prep work. Dip diplomats all around the world working a huge effort to try and land, land that agreement. Laurence Tubiana was a key architect of that agreement. It is a challenge. But, you know, uh, if there is a clear political leadership and, and statementship, if there is a really an involvement of the whole government, uh, really across the board, um, Treasury, uh, Development Aid, well, every, you know, environment, everybody, both at the domestic level and at the international level, uh, I, think, uh, I think UK can make it. The UK has made headway in cutting domestic carbon emissions. It's almost completely phased out coal, for example. But critics say that across government, the message is inconsistent. For example, the UK has committed £11.6 billion over the next five years to tackle climate change abroad. But as Newsnight reported last month, it also finances fossil fuel projects abroad to a tune of £6 billion. Michael Gove was asked about this on Five Live today. I'm asking if you're going to stop the investments in fossil fuels in other developing countries, very specifically, not this country. No, but I think that... Uh, Why uh, not? <laughs> um, let's look at each individual investment. The government has said it wants transport to be as environmentally friendly as possible. But Matt Hancock drew criticism for this answer about domestic air travel last month. Matt Hancock, we face a climate catastrophe. Should we be flying less? Uh, no. I think that uh, connectivity around the country is incredibly important. Philip Dunn was recently elected as chair of the Environmental Audit Committee and he wants to look at the variation across government departments. One of the things we were looking at before at the end of the last parliament was net zero government and I think there is an enormous challenge for government right across departments and in agencies and some of the devolved uh, organisations to get their act together on climate change and one of the things I hope the new committee will be looking at is putting more of a focus on individual departments, on individual agencies to tell us what their plans are so that we can scrutinise them and encourage them to do a bit more. Practising what we preach isn't just about consistency, it's about diplomacy. There's a real danger that if Britain isn't on the track to meet our targets, how can we encourage and coerce uh, others to do the same? But if we don't get our own house in order, it's very difficult to encourage others to take those steps that are necessary to tackle the global crisis. The UK has its hands full this year, looking to strike trade deals around the world. But make no mistake, COP26 is a huge opportunity and a huge potential pitfall for Britain's global reputation.